Gentlemen, welcome back to the channel, and ladies, if you're out there. Um, this Section 5 covers air brakes. Um, we're going to do this just like we've done the rest of them. Um, I'm going to run this all the way through, probably end up being somewhere around 25 to uh, uh, 30 minutes, I assume, by the time I'm done. I could be totally wrong on that. I haven't timed it ahead of time. <clears throat> so starting out here, um, what we're looking at for air brakes is there are three different braking systems. Uh, this could very well definitely be a, uh, a question that you'll see. Uh, the service parking and emergency brake system, um, they are all one um, in the same with the air brake system. Uh, so you need to know all these terms and how they're how they're different and how they're used within the air brake system. Uh, so we're looking at starting down here, our air compressor is the first thing because since that makes our air, uh, that's what's attached to the engine. <coughs> the air compressor governor, air compressor governor is what controls the amount of air that we keep in our storage tanks. Um, you'll need to know the cut in and cutout pressure of the air compressor governor. So cutout level is 125 pounds, which means that's when the air compressor will stop running when the level of the air tank gets to 125 PSI. The air compressor will start up again when it reaches the cut in pressure, which is around 100 PSI. <coughs> Um, and again, the governor allows the compressor to start pumping again. Air storage tanks, that's where the air is kept. That is where it reads how many pounds per square inch um, is in those tanks, and that's how the governor knows to kick the compressor back on or shut it off. Air tank drains, very important that we always drain our air tanks at least as far as this uh, test is concerned. Um, you have two types of uh, air tank drains. You have manually operated and automatic. Uh, and you can read and understand how the difference is between those two. Alcohol evaporators, uh, sometimes this helps to reduce, reduce the risk of ice in the air brake valves and other parts during cold weather. Because of course, if there's ice in air, in an air system, it can make the brakes stop working. Um, even if you have an alcohol evaporator, daily air tank drainage is still needed to get rid of water and oil, according to this manual. All right, safety valve. The safety valve protects the tank and the rest of the system from too much pressure. So uh, just as you had certain pressures up here that your compressor stopped and started, you have to make sure that you don't pump too much into the tanks. That valve, the safety valve, is usually set to open at 150 PSI. If the safety valve releases air, something is wrong. You need to have the fault fixed by a mechanic before you operate the vehicle. All right, moving on. The brake pedal. You apply the brakes by pushing down the brake pedal just like you would in your car. Uh, however, for some reason, they have a couple of different terms here. It is a brake pedal. Somewhere along the line, it's been called a foot valve, but they tend to use this occasionally, treadle valve. I don't know why. I had never heard of it before I was reading through the manual. Um, so, but just know that some questions might, um, that might pertain to the brake pedal, they might use treadle valve instead of just saying, brake pedal. Um, and of course, just like putting brakes on on any uh, vehicle, pushing the pedal down harder applies more air pressure. So, treadle valve. This is a useless term, but they do use it on the permit exam. All right, so foundation brakes. This is what we're looking at here. Uh, they're used at each wheel. The most common type is the S-cam drum brake. Um, they're the most efficient and the easiest to use uh, and easiest to service when it comes to larger vehicles. So your brake drum, shoes, and linings, um, if you're mechanically inclined, you know a little bit about this already. If not, there's a picture down here, um, and there is one of these on each end of an axle. 
So wherever there's a wheel, there's one of these drum brakes behind it. All right? The most common, again, type of um, brake on a large vehicle is an S-cam brake. Because it is most efficient, easiest to service, um, and easy to use. Uh, again, see figure 5.2. Now, there are some other types, wedge brakes and or disc brakes. Um, but again, it says here, wedge brakes and disc brakes are very much less common than S-cam brakes in larger vehicles. All right, supply pressure gauges. All vehicles with air brakes have a pressure gauge connected to the air tank. It, all this does is tell you how much air you have in your tanks. Um, uh, so that'll tell you whether or not you have 100 pounds or 125 pounds. So it goes all the way down to zero, of course, but you never want to let your air get that low. Application pressure gauge. This is not on all vehicle vehicles. Um, what it does is when you push on your brake pedal, this tells you how much pressure you're putting into the system. It can kind of help, as it says right here, um, letting you know that you might have some brake fade going down a long hill or something like that um, because you're pushing harder to get the same amount of brake performance. Low pressure air warning. Uh, this is required on all trucks. Um, it's a signal that tells you if your air pressure in the tanks falls below 60 PSI or one half of the compressor governor cutout pressure on older vehicle vehicles. Um, the warning is usually a red light, a buzzer or a beeper may also be part of that. The important thing to know there is the 60 PSI. Anytime you drop to 60 PSI, it is required by federal uh, DOT regulations that this low air pressure warning come on that gives you enough time to get stopped, pulled over to the side of the road before you lose all of your air. Uh, there are some questions that might possibly name another type of warning called a wigwag. I've been around trucking for almost 30 years. I've never seen a wigwag. Driven trucks as old as 1970 something. Never seen a wigwag. But know that term because it could come up on a question. Stoplight switch. Just like with any vehicle, anytime you press on the brake, your brake lights have to come on. That's what that is about. So anybody who's anybody knows that since they were 16 years old, probably before. Front brake limiting valve. Some older vehicles made before 1975. Another history lesson, yay. Have a front brake limiting valve and control and a control in the cab. Um, all right, so here's the story. Uh, for a long time, they thought front brakes or brakes on the front axle, steer axle of a truck um, were not necessary. Or they would cause a problem because if those um, locked up, then they could cause you to go into a skid. Uh, but as, um, as they have continued to do the research, um, what they have found out is if any tire or any axle locks up and quits turning, that axle tends to take the lead. So they realized that front brakes, even if the front wheels locked up, yes, you would not be able to make turns or steer to get out of the way, but it would not cause anything detrimental as a jackknife um, or something like that. So um, with that, at the same time, the research said that uh, the front brake limiting valve could also be set by the driver just in case conditions required um, that the front brakes may take a little bit less braking power than the rest of the axles just to keep control. Um, they don't have that anymore. That's all preset at the factory. Uh, again, it's another history lesson, um, but there are some vehicles out there that are pre-1975 that you might need to know this about. So they still ask questions about it. So, for what it's worth, 
that's what it is all about. Uh, spring brakes, all truck tractors, all trucks, truck tractors and buses must be equipped with emergency brakes and parking brakes. They must be held on by mechanical force. Spring brakes can also be referred to as emergency brakes. So whenever you don't have your supply air, the spring brakes are applied. Um, understandable. Uh, you, you'll understand more about it when you get into it. Um, but just suffice to say, just make sure that you're familiar with um, what this says here and the fact that spring brakes will come on fully when air pressure drops to a range of 20 to 40 PSI. That's also required by DOT law uh, policy. Uh, never wait for the brakes to come on automatically. Again, once your low air warning comes on at 60 pounds, you want to get off of the road. Um, so anyway, make yourself familiar with that. Parking brake controls. Um, over here in the figure, you can see the different types of knobs. Um, this diamond, I guess they're calling it, is for your tractor. This is for your trailer. This is generally yellow. This one's generally red. Uh, this one is usually blue and very seldom seen. I've only seen it a few times in trucks that I've operated. Uh, very important, there you could see a question about this. Um, never push a brake pedal down when the spring brakes are on um, or applied. If you do, the brakes could be damaged by the combined forces of the springs and the air pressure. So always make sure before you ever use your foot brake, you've pushed in and released your two parking brakes. Modulating control valves. In some vehicles, a control handle on the dashboard may be used to apply the spring brakes gradually. Never seen one. Just need to know what it is. Um, I don't believe there's any questions about it, but just make sure you're familiar with it. Dual parking control valves, generally, you only see these on buses um, because people, transporting people is uh, a little bit more important than transporting cargo. This is for buses that if they have for some reason run out of air, there's a secondary, um, let's see, yeah. Separate air tank, which can be used to release the spring brakes, and this is so you can move the vehicle in an emergency. Anti-lock braking system, another history lesson. Uh, Anti-lock braking systems make no difference whatsoever. Uh, they go over these a lot. Uh, I think a lot of it has to do with the uh, trucking industry, um, making sure that they talk about it. You don't drive a vehicle any different with ABS. ABS doesn't help you in one way or another, except for it just keeps your wheels from um, coming to a complete stop when you push on them really hard and keeps you from losing control. Um, but unless you're in an emergency situation, you drive as you normally would. Um, but here's your history lesson. Truck tractors with air brakes built on or before March 1st, 1997 are going to have ABS. Uh, let's see here, and trailers and converter dollies after March 1st, 1998 are required to be equipped with analog brakes. There are some questions in regard to that, so just make yourself very familiar with that. Okay, subsection 5.1, test your knowledge here. Um, pause the video, go back, and uh, make sure you can answer all these. We'll continue here in just a second with 5.2. Welcome back. Um, we're looking at uh, air brake system components and location. Um, this is a big chart, big schematic here. It's not all that important to know all this stuff. There's just some information that goes along with it. They just like to draw something out here so you got something to look at. Um, most heavy duty vehicles use dual air brake systems for safety. Uh, that way if one goes bad, you'll have another one, hopefully that can help you get off uh, the road. So you've got one as a primary system, the other is called the secondary system. Those are two terms that you might see on a question. Um, and before driving a vehicle with a dual air system, 
You need to allow time for the air compressor to build up a minimum of 100 PSI in both primary and secondary systems. Uh, let's see. The warning light and buzzer should come on before the air pressure drops below 60 PSI in either system. If this happens while driving, you should stop right away and safely park the vehicle. Again, that's what we've gone over already. Uh, that is your low pressure warning. Uh, that tells you that you've got an issue with your system. Get off the road. Okay. Um, let's see. We've talked about seven step already. You can do a quick five step walk around inspection. Um, you want to check first your slack adjusters uh, on S cam brakes, park on level ground and chalk the wheels, release your brakes, and if your slack adjuster moves more than about one inch where the push rod attaches to it, it probably needs adjustment. Uh, that's a figure that you might need to know on a question for the test. All right, moving on. This is how we check a lot of the stuff. Test low pressure warning signal. We've talked about that. What's the low pressure warning signal? It's when your system gets to 60 pounds. So you shut off your engine when you have enough air pressure. So the low pressure warning signal is not on. Turn the electrical power on. Step on and off the brake pedal to reduce air tank pressure. And the low air pressure warning signal must come on before the pressure drops to less than 60 PSI. All right. Check that the spring brakes come on automatically. So at that point, once you've got the 60 PSI, the buzzer's going off, it's bothering you to no end, it's loud, it hurts your ears, but you're gonna keep on um, pressing the foot pedal um, until the brakes come back, or pop back out, brake valves, excuse me, uh, and that will be between 20 and 40 PS, 20 and 45 PSI. Uh, then you want to check the rate of pressure buildup, which the pressure should build from 85 to 100 PSI in 45 seconds in dual air systems. Um, you may want to kind of make yourself familiar with single air systems pre-1975, another history lesson. Um, that pressure buildup from 50 to 90 within three minutes. Um, so that's different between the two, but again, that's pre-1975. Uh, test your air leakage rate. Um, so this is important. I'm not going to read through all that, but what you need to know is um, when you when you get your air system fully charged, turn off the engine and release the parking brake, and there should be no more than two PSI in one minute loss for single vehicles and less than three PSI in one minute for combination vehicles. Then after that, you would push on your brake and it goes to three pounds in one minute for single, four pounds in a minute for combination. All right, so then you're gonna check your cut in and cut out. What did we talk about? The cut in was when your governor kicks on, that's 100 pounds. Uh, your cutout pressure is 125 pounds. Uh, make yourself very familiar on how to do that. Test your parking brake. Stop the vehicle, put the parking brake on, and gently pull against it in the low gear. And then test your service brakes. Wait for normal air pressure. Um, move the vehicle forward slowly, about 5 miles per hour, and apply the brakes firmly using the brake pedal. Uh, that's what you need to know there. So. That is subsection 5.2 and 5.3. Test your knowledge. Again, go through this. Make sure you can answer the questions. Uh, and then you can move on to the next section. Okay. Welcome back. Section 5.4, using air brakes. Normal stops, uh, they're going to be a little bit different. Uh, air brakes, uh, so you'll have to get used to that. But most of the important stuff with this part... Um, this subsection, um, we've already talked about braking with analog brakes. Emergency stops, that's something you need to think about. Um, so make yourself familiar with that. You've got two types of braking that you can use in an emergency situation, and that is control braking and stab braking. So you need to know the difference between these two. Um, stopping distance, 
Now, in general knowledge, we already talked about stopping distance. We went over perception distance, reaction distance, braking distance, which equals total stopping distance. Because now that we've added air brakes to the equation, brake lag is a thing. Hydraulic brakes um, are hydraulic, so um, hydraulic meaning water or liquid does not compress. However, with air brakes, everybody's heard of an air compressor, air does compress. So it takes a little, uh, about a half a second for your air brakes to actually start to work when you push your brake pedal. So you need to know that all these things are part of your total stopping distance. Um, you need to know this, um, what do you call it? The uh, example here um, is also in figure 5.6. And this is very important because any question that might be on the quiz or test, excuse me, should be this exact formula with the answer being 450 feet. So it's one thing you need to commit to memory. Brake fading or failure. Already talked about brake fading or failure. Uh, brake fading is because your brakes have gotten too hot. They're not as good as they were. And failure is what happens after your brakes fade for too long and they become null. <clears throat> okay, so proper braking technique. We've already gone over this. We talked about the term snubbing is a, what you might refer to when you go through this process. Um, and here's the example. Uh, this might come up on a on a, uh, a question on your test. Um, they might use snubbing as the term to describe the example here. Low air pressure, again, we already talked about low air pressure. Um, let's see. You have, well, make yourself familiar with this. It's, it basically goes over stuff we've already talked about um, just in an emergency situation. Uh, anytime you park, always use your parking brake, except for in these situations, um, in which case you need to try to find a level spot and uh, chalk your wheels until your brakes have had time to cool off. Um, so that's the end of air brakes. Uh, again, go over the uh, gray box here, make sure you can answer all these questions, um, and then set to taking all your practice tests, and uh, make sure you're truly prepared before you go down to try to take your test at the DMV. Um, I hope you've enjoyed all this. I know you haven't. It's been boring and mundane. Um, but uh, this again gives you a little bit more concise uh, idea on what you may have to uh, look for when you do go down and take your test. So good luck with it and uh, I'll see you in class.